Colin Pitchfork, who raped and murdered two schoolgirls, to be released after government loses challenge. Pitchfork, now in his early 60s was the first person to be convicted of murder on the basis of DNA evidence. Colin Pitchfork, who raped and murdered two schoolgirls in the 1980s, will be released from prison after the parole board rejected a government challenge. Pitchfork was given a life sentence in 1988 with a minimum 30-year term after strangling Linda Mann and Don Ash Arth, both 15, in Leicestershire in 1983 and 1986 respectively. The government had challenged the parole board's decision that Pitchfork was suitable for release following a hearing in March. But in a statement, the board said the appeal has been refused. Reacting to the decision, Don Ashworth's mother Barbara Ashar said it was disappointing, but added, he can't hurt me anymore. She said I've had 33 years of it, and it's all been said, and as far as I'm concerned he's going to be out in amongst the public so it speaks for itself. Advertisement. Pitchfork who is now in his early 60s was sentenced to life after pleading guilty to to murders, to rapes, to indecent assaults and conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. He was the first person in UK history to be convicted on the basis of DNA evidence. In 2009, the Court of Appeal ruled he had made exceptional progress while in prison and had his term reduced to 28 years, therefore becoming eligible to be considered for release in 2015. Despite being denied freedom in 2016 and 2018, he was moved to an undisclosed open prison. The March ruling that he could be released was strongly criticized by his victims' families and lead to Justice Secretary Robert Buckland's request to the parole board. But their statement read the parole board has immense sympathy for the families of Don Ashworth and Linda Mann and reconnaisses the pain and anguish they have endured and continue to endure through the parole process. However, parole board panels are bound by law to assess whether a prisoner is safe to release. It has no power to alter the original sentence set down by the courts. Legislation dictates that a panel's decision must be solely focused on what risk a prisoner may pose and release and whether that risk can be managed in the community. As made clear in the reconsideration decision, release was supported by all of the Secretary of State's witnesses during Mr. Pitchfork's review. The Ministry of Justice, which works independently of the parole board, said, It is disappointed with the outcome. Our sympathies remain with the families of Lindemann and Don Ashworth, but they can be reassured that Pitchfork will be subject to close probation supervision for life and faces an immediate return to prison if he fails to comply with his license conditions. They said in a statement, The Lord Chancellor has launched a root and branch review of the parole system, which will report back later this year and we are changing the law so that child murderers such as Pitchfork face life in prison without the possibility of parole as the default sentence. Analysis by Martin Brunt, crime correspondent. The Justice Secretary's bid to keep coal in Pitchfork in jail was doomed to fail because it was a political move. Robert Buckland hadn't objected to the double killer's release throughout the original hearing and stepped in later only because of a public outcry. It is never easy getting the board to change its mind and his argument that it was irrational and the panel had failed to give sufficient reasons for its decision to release Pitchfork wasn't enough. He probably knew that when he made it. And, of course, Pitchfork had completed his minimum sentence of 28 years earlier reduced from 30 by 2016 and had been turned down for parole twice since then. When he was jailed for raping and murdering Linda, Mann, and Don Ash Arth, he had already committed a series of sex attacks in earlier years. But however awful his offenses, however much the families and the public's outrage, the reasons for keeping him in jail were dwindling. And he will have to live under tough restrictions breaking any of them will likely get him sent back to jail. A leading defense lawyer said that statistics show the parole board rarely gets its decisions wrong and prisoners seldom may offend. Colin Pitchfork may be a notorious killer, but under the law as it stands he had done his time. Pitchfork was a 22-year-old married father of two when he committed his first murder in November 1983. His trial heard he left his baby son sleeping in his car while he raped and strangled Miss Mann in the village of Narborough before driving home and putting his son to bed. Three years later, just over a mile away from the scene of his first crime, he raped and murdered Miss Ashar in what a pathologist described as a brutal sexual assault. He initially evaded justice with a 17-year-old man, 
falsely confessing to one of the murders and one of his colleagues being coerced into taking a DNA test for him. But after 5,000 men in the area underwent DNA profiling the first time ever it had been done on such a large scale he was caught.